Amanha, Amanha, Exacau, Chocadilho. You know, I'm learning Portuguese. I'm trying really hard to improve my pronunciation, but these words are really difficult for me. And there is an especially bad feeling I get when I know my pronunciation is wrong. I know native speakers are not going to understand. So if you're anything like me and you're trying hard to improve your English pronunciation, you might feel a little frustrated. You might struggle with long multi-syllabic words in English. You might know these words in your own language. Hello, Brazilians. But how about learning 10 of the most difficult words to pronounce in English? In this lesson, we're going to take a look at 10 words that you've especially requested that I teach you. They're long, multi-syllabic, and quite difficult to pronounce in English. So are you ready to repeat after me? Let's go. Just before we jump into our English pronunciation lesson together, if you love improving your accent in English, then hit the subscribe button right down there. And be sure to follow Go Natural English on Facebook and on Instagram to get the best tips and stay in the know. For each of our 10 difficult words to pronounce in English, I'm gonna ask you to first think about how you would pronounce the word to get your brain working. And then I'm gonna share some common mistakes so that you can avoid those and then the proper correct pronunciation of the word and the meaning and then I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me as I say the word correctly once more are you ready let's go number one a common mistake with this word is to say the vowel sounds incorrectly or to put the stress on the wrong syllable now this word comes from French and what's interesting is that in French you can actually have stress on more than one syllable in each word but in English we usually only have the main strong stress on one syllable in any one given word but in this word since it comes from the French we'll hear the stress a bit on the first syllable but mainly on the last syllable entrepreneur an entrepreneur is someone who works for themselves they might be a small business owner for example ready to repeat after me entrepreneur excellence number two another mistake is to not blend sounds in the last syllable so for example individual let's say it correctly now individual do you hear how the d and the u actually blend together to make this j sound it's really interesting one more time individual an individual means one for example i'm an individual person, one person. Very good, let's repeat it, individual. This word has a lot of R's and a lot of vowels, so I think where most students get tripped up is the R sound. So I might hear something like rural. <laughs> <laughs> and to be honest, this word is quite difficult for most native speakers to pronounce as well. Number three, this word rural means the countryside not the city the correct way to pronounce this is with a strong first syllable and that'll help you to make the r sounds so rural repeat it rural really round those lips when you make the r sound one more time rural or you could just say the countryside if that word is really tough for you or not the city very good number four this is a difficult word because it's multi-syllabic and it's hard to know where to put the stress so i've heard people saying things like massachusetts it's a long difficult word i actually used to live in this state it's the state in new england where you can find the popular famous historic city of boston let's repeat after me Massachusetts. This word is also tricky because it's long. So there's also the last syllable which has that T-I-O-N that can be difficult to pronounce. Some mistakes that I've heard would be saying something like procrastination. Not quite. It's procrastination. So remember the stressed syllable is the second to last. Nay shun and that t-i-o-n makes a shun sound procrastination means waiting until the very last moment you have a paper due tomorrow morning well you're probably going to be writing it at midnight tonight 
if you usually engage in procrastination. Next, number six. How do you think we pronounce this? This word's difficult because you might not know what to do with the CH or where to put the stress. The correct pronunciation is parochial, and this means pertaining to a church. For example, parochial school. It also has another meaning, narrow-minded. So again, repeat after me, parochial. Number seven. I don't know why, but I think number seven is a fun word. And this was actually requested by Go Natural English followers on social media. Again, knowing where to stress this word is important. And that's where a lot of English learners make mistakes. You might be noticing a theme that with longer words in English, the stress is super important. So how do we say this word? Dilapidated. Another interesting thing that happens with this word is that the T in the last syllable, Ted, becomes a D sound because it's between two vowels. Dilapidated. Excellent. And this means worn out or worn down. For example, that's a dilapidated building. It's old, it hasn't been taken care of, it's not looking so good. Repeat after me dilapidated. Here's a quick tip. You might have seen that I kind of stuck my neck out when I made the stressed syllable. It can actually help you to lengthen the vowel on a stressed syllable. Dilapidated. And you might look a little weird at first, but it'll help your pronunciation, so don't worry about it. Number eight. How do we say this? You might not be sure about how to pronounce the CH or where to put the stress in this word. It's not chronological. It's, it's difficult for me to say it the wrong way. It's chronological. And this means in the order of time. So we put items or events in the order that they happened time-wise by the clock or the calendar. That's chronological. Number nine. Ooh, this is another long one, so stress is important. In this word, the T does not turn into a D sound. Longitudinal. For example, if you're looking at a map or you're studying longitudinal positions, maybe you're learning to navigate a boat. This word you may not see very often, but it's a good one to practice our pronunciation. For example, measured from east to west on the map, longitudinal. And finally, number 10. How do we say this one? A big mistake that I usually hear is the wrong stress, like unfortunately, but we actually want to say unfortunately. Also, do you hear how that T becomes a ch? It's not unfortunately. Unfortunately, that's another mistake that I hear a lot. It's unfortunately. I would use it as a transition. Unfortunately, I can't come to the event or I can't go to the party, but I really wanted to. Are you enjoying this lesson? Because I got a few more really good requests from viewers of the Go Natural English Facebook page live video where I asked for your most challenging words for you to pronounce in English. I'd like to include four more. Shahid Ullah, thank you for asking about this word. This is a beautiful word. I really love this one. Eloquently. I think you can hear the stress. Eloquently. It means very gracefully, beautifully, with class. For example, she eloquently addressed her peers at her class graduation. Gelin Arguilles, number one. This can be difficult for Spanish speakers. Maybe, Gelin, you speak Spanish. And a big mistake that people usually make is saying something like yogurt. The American English way to pronounce this word is yogurt. Yogurt. It's really important to get the vowel sound and to completely make each sound yogurt. And of course, the stress on the first syllable, really strong. Second from Gelin is, it's not ounce, it's ounce. Make that face with me, ounce, ounce. That's exactly how it's supposed to sound, I swear. And three from Gelin, this word, it's not calendar, it's not 
calendar. It's calendar. So I think we're recognizing a theme that stress is super important and vowel sounds are pretty crazy in English, but repetition will help you a lot. Valdirene Mota, thank you for your question about this word. Is it vegetables? Carrots and lettuce and, uh, well, tomatoes are debatable, so are avocados. Some people say they're fruits and other people say they're vegetables. veg t bulls. It seems like I'm skipping a syllable, right? But this is how native English speakers say it. By the way, tell me in the comments if you consider tomatoes and avocados fruits or vegetables. And Tony Tan, perhaps the best word of all, this one. Is it pronunciacion? Hmm, maybe not. Maybe it's pronunciation. So again, stress and that T-I-O-N. I think you can see some patterns like the T-I-O-N, shun, and you can see that usually when a T comes between two vowels, it becomes a D, but then you can see there's exceptions, and exceptions are what make the English language so much fun, right? Fun, yeah, let's call it fun. Let's call it fun because English is a challenge. It is that much more rewarding when you master it. And that's what we're here for, to master it and to learn and grow together. Amanhã é sessão chocadilho. After this amazing video, it would be unnatural if you did not subscribe. So click right down there to subscribe to Go Natural English Tips once a week, every single Monday, right here on the YouTube channel, Go Natural English, and on the blog at gonaturalenglish.com. If you would like to learn all our best tips, get our ebook, The English Fluency Formula. Click right up there. And hey, if you want to keep watching videos, click for last week's video right down there to use the past perfect grammar tense with examples. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next week when we talk about 10 very American words and how to pronounce them with an American accent. You're gonna love it. I'll see you then. Mwah. Bye for now.